Due to the warmer weather, I've been riding my bicycle more lately. I got to thinking about how force and motion goes through the bicycle's gearing mechanisms and wheels. In this video, we will be going over how the gear ratios work and how to calculate how much force reaches the tire. To start off, let's go over how gear ratios work. Now, on a bicycle, there is a gear attached to the pedal that is 19 centimeters diameter to chain center. There is also a gear on the wheel that is 7 centimeters diameter to chain center. Now to get the gear ratio, we can take the circumference of the 19 centimeter gear and divide it by the circumference of the 7 centimeter gear. In this case, we get a gear ratio of about 2.71. This means that every time the big gear turns once, the small gear turns 2.71 times. To further cement this, I have placed a graphic of both the gear's circumferences laid out flat. You will notice that the 7 cm gear circumference is much shorter than the 19 cm gear circumference. As stated before, 2.71 7 cm circumferences will fit into the 19 cm circumference. Or in other words, the 7 cm gear will rotate around 2.71 times for every one revolution of the 19 cm gear. Now let's figure out how much force is applied to the ground after going through the gear system. I have placed a graphic of a bicycle that is not to scale. It consists of a pedal marked in black, a gear marked in blue that is attached to the pedal, a gear marked in green that is attached to the wheel, and a wheel that is marked in purple. We will break this problem down into steps to find the final force at the wheel. So we will begin at the pedal. A force is applied at the pedal that results in a torque. This torque is then translated to the gear attached to the pedal. The thing to note about the torque going from the pedal to the gear is that the torques are equal to one another. Being that the gear has a smaller radius, the force on the gear is greater. This comes at the cost of having less displacement, so the gear has a slower tangential velocity than the pedal. Think about opening and closing a door. It is relatively easy to open a door from the side farthest from the hinge. If you try to open a door close to the hinge, it becomes much harder. Now if you were to attach a rope to the door at the point closer to the hinge, and move the door at the side farthest from the hinge, the rope would have a greater force on it than you are applying to the door. This comes at the cost of having less displacement. Now let's take a look at the gear system. What is happening with the gears is a change in how far away the force is applied from the center. The force on both gears are the same as seen in the diagram. The larger gear has the force creating a torque at 9.5 centimeters away from the center, and the smaller gear has the same force creating a torque at 3.5 centimeters away from the center. This results in higher RPMs at the cost of less torque at the smaller gear. Finally, at the rear wheel, the torque at the small gear of the wheel equals the torque at the outside edge of the wheel. This means that the force applied to the ground is less than the force applied on the small gear. Think of the door example from the pedal and the large gear example. Now to wrap things up, to solve for how much force is applied to the ground, we can take the first torque equation of force 1 times radius 1 equals force 2 times radius 2. Recall that force 2 and force 3 are equal, so we will swap out force 2 for force 3. We can then take the equation of force 3 of radius 4 times force 4 over radius 3 and substitute it into the first equation. After doing some rearranging of formulas, we are left with force 1 times radius 3 times radius 1 over radius 4 times radius 2 equals force 4. We end up with force 4 being equal to 0.21 times force 1. And that concludes this video. Hopefully I earned a like or subscription. Thank you for watching.